Hi guys, Matt Easton here. So for those of you who watch my channel regularly, you will know that I have a personal penchant for um, 19th century style things and 19th century weapons. So uh, for a while I have been drawn to the brand Rough Rider, um, who uh, make a wide variety of knives, folding knives, fixed blade knives, bowie knives, that um, essentially have a, a kind of old school, uh, old kind of wild west look about them. Um, and so I've been looking at them for a while and uh, I've recently picked up a couple uh, from Henny Haynes and I have to, a uh, UK um, supplier, and I have to say uh, probably a lot of people watching this know anyway about Henny Haynes and I'll put a, a link in uh, under this video are an excellent company, absolutely fantastic service um, they're very good website, very quick to deal with, you get uh, lots of emails updating you on your order and they send the order out super super quick and basically um, I, I ordered this on a, on a, a Wednesday evening in fact so after they were closed and I received it on the Friday and that was with paying nothing extra for postage at all so very very quick um, and that is Rough Rider so uh, what we're looking at here is the uh, Rough Rider Old Yellow Trapper this model is called it is a uh, UK legal in inverted commas um, non-locking folding pocket knife essentially so the blade for UK legal carry uh, that means the blade is under three inches long and there's no locking mechanism to the to the blade or blades okay so here is the knife there we go as you can see it has the look of a 19th century uh, pocket knife okay the only real difference is that instead of ivory we've got a kind of plastic um, and instead of carbon steel blades just open one up. Instead of a carbon steel blade, you've got a stainless steel blade. So, you know, there's compromises for modern materials, but these are economy knives. I mean, they are, they're fairly cheap. We're talking about most of the uh, Rough Rider knives are in the kind of £10 to £30 range. Okay, so they're pretty, they're pretty cheap. Uh, however, we can be critical of them. Um, you can get some pretty good folding knives and, and locking, uh, locking knives in the sort of 20, 30 pound range. Um, and, and so, um, you know, we can afford to be critical even though these are pretty affordable. Um, on first sight, really nice uh, knife, quite nice looking, obviously nice shape, that's why I, I bought it. I liked the look of it, that was what I was kind of looking for. Um, examining a little bit closer, so the reviews I had read actually, a lot of people had commented on the fact that the blades came really nice and sharp. In my opinion actually they're not that sharp. Um, they're pretty sharp, they're functionally sharp for most jobs you need but you can certainly improve that with a DC4 stone or perhaps even just a, a strop uh, with a leather strop. Um, so to my mind, and I should point out this uh, this knife has two blades, there we go, it has a kind of uh, a broader blunter tipped blade and a pointy blade okay and they're both non-locking and they're both under three inches long both stainless uh, who knows what kind of stainless they are uh, probably 420 I would imagine they might be 440 who knows what type of 440 um, and um, yeah they're not super super sharp out of the box that doesn't particularly bother me uh, because I'm quite happy to touch up edges and improve a knife when it you know upon uh, upon receipt of it but I know that some buyers want things to be super razor sharp out of the box that's fine um, okay the uh, folding uh, mechanism is quite stiff which to be frank if if you don't have a locking mechanism you want it to be quite stiff because you don't want it accidentally folding on your fingers um, so it's fairly fairly stiff um, quite a nice strong uh, spring obviously in the back there okay and the one thing I would say is they, uh, in a lot of descriptions of these knives, um, they describe these um, uh, sections at the top and bottom as, as being of nickel silver. Well, I wouldn't describe them as nickel silver at all. They're fairly clearly brass, actually. Okay, so I don't understand why everywhere se seems to describe them as nickel silver, because I've seen nickel silver <laughs> a fair amount in my life, and that doesn't look anything like nickel silver to me. It looks like brass, but... That's fine, so it's brass. I pretty much knew that before I got this anyway. Um, the actual scales of the grip, uh, whilst they're supposed to emulate ivory, are in fact quite a pleasingly coloured uh, yellowy plastic that does look quite like aged ivory, um, I have to say. And the uh, rivets holding the... I hope you can see those. The rivets holding the plates on are quite nice and smooth. They don't stick out. Um, 
and the plates are held securely and flatly against the, the body of the, the brass uh, plates in there in the knife. Now, criticism. One thing I would say um, is that there are a few imperfections on this knife upon arrival. Okay, So there's uh, a couple of little black uh, marks, essentially oxidisation, on the stainless steel blades, which I think is fairly, fairly poor. That's not very good. Um, that shouldn't have been allowed to happen. Usually, from experience, I know this usually happens in shipping, especially with products coming from China, and this is a Chinese-made Chinese knife. Um, so it tends to be that um, some kind of you know dirt gets in there against the blade during transportation and leaves a stain on the blade and of course as most of you know stainless steel is stain resistant but it's not stain it's not immune to stains you can of course stain especially with certain types of fruit juice you can stain stainless steel permanently and it would need to be polished repolished to get rid of that the other thing uh, that i found bugged is there is a little black mark i'm sure you can't see it uh, on this camera uh, but there is a little black mark in one of the uh, yellow side scales. It doesn't usually bother me, but it's worth mentioning. But I think the thing which uh, does bother me the most uh, about this is about this knife, in terms of being critical of it, is that the scales, uh, these plastic scales, at the end aren't quite flush with the bolsters at either end. And that kind of bothers me, especially when it's a pocket knife, because a pocket knife is quite a tactile thing, might spend quite a lot of time in your pocket, obviously. And uh, it's just kind of feeling the edge of that plastic plate is kind of annoying. It should sit more flush, more smooth against the metal fittings. But, you know, this is a £10 knife, it's, it's pretty cheap. What can you expect? I don't know. You can get an open L or, or um, you know, you can get functional, functionally really good knives actually for £10, um, but maybe not as fancy. So with this, clearly you're paying for the looks of it and for the styling. Uh, so there we go. It's not a bad folding knife. I, I like the look of it and I'm happy to pay £10 for the look of the thing. I'm sure the blades will work. Um, they're fairly sharp and I'm sure they'll hold an okay enough edge for the kind of things I'll be using it for. Uh, and it's um, you know got two blades on it. It's relatively slim, relatively, well it's kind of medium weight, it's neither light nor heavy really. Um, so it's fine as a pocket knife, it's about the same weight as an average Swiss Army Victorian Knox for example. Um, so there we go. But it's not fantastic, okay? It's, it has its flaws as you would often expect with a knife in this price range. Cheers.